to discuss about the reservoir stimulation what is it why it is needed what are the basic things what are the applications of reservoir stimulation and how it is going to help us in uh, managing our oil and gas reservoirs so let's start with the basic definition of reservoir stimulation but before going uh, to the slide number one, let me share that about this picture that I have here right in front of uh, your eyes. You see a very colorful picture, a very nice picture, but you, it is nice, but it is very, very complicated and uh, it has so many grids. You can see that it has so many blocks, small blocks, and each block has its own calculations. So when we run the reservoir simulation simulators <coughs> on computer, so the all each block calculation has to be done so for example in this one in this model that you see you we call it a geological model in this model if you see that there are 1 million cells 1 million blocks it means 1 million calculations needs to be done it needs computer very high a performance computer and uh, so on so let's start with our course and uh, see how it all goes Let's look at the lecture slide number one, which is reservoir simulation. First of all, we need to look at the background of reservoirs. What are the reservoirs? Well, the reservoirs are the storages where we have oil and gas. It's as simple as possible. But these storages are not at the surface. They are not like the water tanks in our homes. And they are not like the storages tank in the refineries or the and they are not like anything that you see on the surface. The problem with these reservoir storages are they are underground and they are in Earth's crust. And if you go for the easiest uh, reservoir, they are around 1000 meter below uh, the Earth's surface. So for in order to reach those reservoirs, we drill the wells and uh, then we produce them. So basically, in conclusion, we cannot touch those reservoirs we cannot physically reach those reservoirs so if we cannot reach them if we cannot touch them how we can manage them then this is the question number one so in order to manage them we need a tool we need a tool and uh, that tool needs is an engineering tool and that here comes the role of reservoir simulation so with the help of reservoir simulation actually we manages those reservoirs which are needed to to produce oil and gas and as a petroleum engineer our main goal and objective is to produce oil and gas so let's look at it what is the reservoir uh, simulation tool well it's a tool combined by the physics mathematics reservoir engineering computer programming for predicting the hydrocarbon reservoir performance under various operating strategies well the statement is uh, so nice and well written and it's a very small but if you look at into the details word by word it, it it has to be explained actually first of all the physics well we have as I told you that our reservoirs they are deep and at least 1000 meter so we need to understand and imagine and look at the data look at the the data that we have the laboratory reports we have that what is going on physically in those reservoirs i give you a simple example for example we have to look at the as you know that our reservoirs are composed of porosity based and there is a drop there is a matrix you know there are the fractures in the reservoirs you know there's the overburden pressure so what's going on in the reservoir how much pressure we have there what is the temperature exactly there and uh, what what's going on i mean is there any fracture there is there any bacteria there is there any minerals there so what is there physically so we have to look at it and how we actually look at the physics of those uh, reservoirs actually it's a main job of geologists and geophysicists they actually look at into the geological uh, stuff of reservoirs they look at they get the data through the blocks during the drilling process and uh, we get the cuttings rock cuttings and they analyze them they know what is going on in the reservoir what kind of minerals they have so they develop their models based on the physics then here comes the role of the mathematicians mathematicians actually collaborate with phys physics geologists and the geophysicists people and they look at their 
processes and they convert their uh, physical processes into the mathematical equations. And this is the point of mathematicians here. Then we have third one, which is the reservoir engineering. Uh, reservoir engineers actually their job is to manage the reservoir. So what they do, they take the input from the geologists, they take the input from the geophysics, they take the input from the mathematicians, and they develop the strategies to use those models, the mathematical models, and uh, do their per calculations. Now, what kind of calculations we do? This is the answer questions that I'm going to discuss in this lecture also. Then we have computer programming because the physics, the mathematics, the reservoir engineering, they actually this all is, you know, is combined and compiled by the computer programmers. They write a good programs like we have some program for reservoir simulation, which is uh, Eclipse that we use in oil and gas industry and so on. So once we have the physics, once we have the mathematical equations, once we have the engineering background, the computer program develops the program. Then as an applied reservoir engineer, what we do, we put some conditions, operating strategies, and we check what's going on. As you know, our main objective as a reservoir engineer, as you have studied in reservoir engineering, that how much oil we can produce in next 10 years? This is a straightforward question. The question is straightforward, but answer is very, very tricky. So how much oil we are going to produce in next year? Do you think that the, we may have decline in production? Or do you think that we may have a problem in uh, of water coming in the next few years? Or do you think that, so there are so many questions that needs to be answered. So, and that has to be calculated. That has to be, that's why the engineering team is there. Uh, so as you see that here, we have written that we gain insight into the recovery system and so on. Here you can see that uh, we have uh, uh, data, computer program. It, the mathematical program is given to this one. Then parameters, reservoir engineering parameters, what is porosity, permeability, permeability, and, and temperature, and pressure, and so on. This all parameters are given. My model is given, which is based on the geological, physical processes. We combine all this data, gives us the opt outcome. So that's all the overall simulation process that goes on.